It's April the 2nd, 2012, and I'm fishing two sessions aboard Andy Bradbury's Fleetwood base, Blue Mink. The first one was done in bright weather, bright sunshine, really warm day, plenty of fish outside, and this one is inside the river on a less pleasant day with plenty of wind and obviously a little bit cooler. For as far back as I can remember, Fleetwood has enjoyed reliable numbers of plays. Obviously, there's been population fluctuations as there are with all species of fish. But while numbers of other commercially important species of fish have been declining over recent years, place numbers actually appear to be going up, and not only at Fleetwood, but around other parts of the file coast too. Two. A full house. Yeah. <laughs> Hot, sunny and flat calm. At face value, the perfect boat fishing scenario. But while place might like the sunny aspect of this weather, flat calm conditions are most certainly not to the liking here, hence the seemingly endless stream of dabs in the early part of day one. There's a cricket patch any longer, is there? Place can most certainly be aggressive feeders when the mood takes them, but dabs never like to waste time when it comes to getting a meal, on top of which there are many more of them in Morecambe Bay, particularly away from the influence of fresh water over the outer marks dotted around the bay. I'll lift it up now. Pretty good. And that's pretty much how this day went until mid-afternoon, when a sea breeze was triggered by the heat putting a ripple on the water's surface, which was when the first place showed up, quickly followed by about 30 of its hungry mates. A place here, a place up front. Oh, good one. Good one. Okay. okay yeah. Oh, Bob's got a bigger one than mine. <laughs> Have you got that magnifying glass on? <laughs> Show the spots. Oh, uh, well, that's all right. Lovely. I've always thought that they were too, it's like her plate of wood, isn't it, isn't it her? Yeah. Well, it finally worked, Jack. Paul's, Paul's five. Four on the shade. There we are, lovely. What did you spin, eh? Spectacular, one of the highlights of the voyage. But, yeah. Uh, Come on, skip, 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 skip. Unlike other parts of the UK, off the Lancashire coast, we fish for our place at anchor due to us not having large banks to make long, meaningful drifts over. Our place marks tend to be smaller and more discreet. Black Lug here is the number one hook filler, with frozen often out fishing fresh, tipped off with either a small sliver of squid or something else like coloured such as a cockle. Because the boat is stationary, large heavy attractor spoons don't get the same degree of fluttering movement as they would on the drift, though some people do still use them on the basis that while they may not do any good, they certainly don't do any harm either. In addition to the potential for size, plus of course those red spots which are sure to get the old adrenaline pump going, size for size, plays are also very good hard fighting fish too. Unlike dabs, which give up at the first hint of pressure and hit the surface white side up, plays keep their heads well down with powerful dives right up to the net, and will on pretty much all occasions hit the surface spots upwards and still full of fight, which is perhaps the most endearing quality.
Arguably, the biggest downfall is the fact that they can be greedy fish, even to the point of taking two baits. So unless you're spot on with your timing, you're certain to deep hook a lot of place when fishing an anchor, which with the small mouths can make disgorging particularly difficult, especially when they turn out to be smaller fish, which really ought to be going back unharmed. Now today we've got a dropping tide exposing the banks, which even in quite a brisk breeze can lead to a flattening sea. Remember what happened the other day? Brilliant sunshine, flat calm, until the wind picked up a little bit, put a ripple on the water, and then plenty of place coming aboard. There's more than a ripple on today, Phil, so there's no excuses. Now we planned this trip earlier in the year, confidently expecting to get out for the reasons already given. We had place every month of the year last year, um, particularly odd ones mixed in with the coddling going through December, January. Uh, but every year they do tend to start showing in numbers as we go through March, increasing numbers as we sort of towards the end of March uh, into early April, which just fits in nicely before obviously this taupe and the smoo down season running into sort of later May and June. Um, we do keep a diary every year um, just to check on places, on marks and things that back up and we can show you sort of 30th of March last year the, the mark we're fishing now 35 to 40 place uh, in the first few hours um, smaller tides preferably on the ebb um, however we do fish different marks obviously on the spring tides on the flood um, so it's no disadvantage or advantage it's just really on the day um, obviously the weather as well I once kept place in a, a four foot marine tank um, it's a matter of interest to see what, what sort of feeding habits and that they would actually be like um, obviously on the small version but as they grow up uh, the fish are, are acting exactly the same and I found that if you dropped a little bit of worm into the tank uh, that the place would arch its back and watch it sink gradually to the bottom um, if the worm was just lay there static on the bottom the place would leave it alone but the moment that you actually moved it, you had to, only had to move it marginally. Just that slight bit of movement, the place would virtually attack it and take it straight down in one. Which sort of follows with the angling side of it, where I, I would advise anglers not to particularly strike into a place, but just to move the bait along the bottom. And as soon as they move the bait, you tend to find they get a second hit and the place is up. One fish you do need to be familiar with in these parts is the lesser weaver. You must watch for those venomous black dorsal fin and gill cover spines and don't spoil a good day by getting stung. You also get quite a few sizeable flounders inside the estuary too. To compensate there aren't that many dabs on the inside which is particularly important when it's the place you want. So what's your take then on the best baits and rigs? Rigs and baits, I would tend to use it on, a, on a, when the tide's running, there's a bit of movement. I don't think you can beat a flowing trace, like an example we have here. It tends to be about three and a half, four foot long, um, split like I say, one off the end, one up off it. Uh, plenty of beads on the hook, uh, baited up with worm. Um, this angler particularly has done a squid cocktail, whereas normally I would probably tip off with a squid or cockle or mussel. When the tide starts to ease away, you'd probably find that a paternoster or spreader boom would work more effectively. As, again, this type of rig with a lack of tide run is prone to tangle up. Some people reckon that the place at this time of year are a bit on the thin side and not worth catching. But when you see those red spots at the top of the water, all of that goes right out the window. 